All right. Hello, everyone. We're just kind of waiting for everyone to get started here. A lot of people are getting to know Zoom for the first time. So we've had lots of people call in trying to figure out how to get on here. And uh, I think we're we're all being forced to, to get into the technology world and to be more virtual. So um, we're just gonna give everyone a couple of minutes, but um, I really appreciate everyone's time today. What I hope from this presentation is that I can help maybe clarify some things for you, help you understand a little more about COVID-19 and also take some steps for your immune system and your overall health to help you not during just this time, but just overall quality of life and to help your immune system. So um, we'll give everyone maybe one or two minutes and then I will share my slides and we'll get started. I know this is a very stressful time for all of us and we're um, you know, having to social distance, which a lot of times means that we're not um, connecting and, and communicating. So I really like Zoom. I think this is a fabulous um, way to be able to connect in so many levels. I know I have actually been on with some of my girlfriends and some of my family members for um, you know, just family time and happy hour time and dance time. And you know, there's lots of different ways you can use this Zoom app. So it's been kind of fun learning the whole process. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to pull up my slides here for you. Okay. It looks like we are going to have a big group here today. I think I saw um, over 60 people on here today and we probably have half of that right now. So people are still getting on Zoom and realizing what time it is and all of that good stuff. So, and a lot of you, I know you are ready, you're, you're uh, clients of mine, and then there's a lot of people on here that I don't know yet. So it'll be nice to get to know some new people. All right, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and actually get started because there is an introduction page, so we'll be able to get to that. So my um, presentation today, my webinar is Why Your Immune System Matters. And of course, COVID-19 is not the only reason for that, but it is a good way for us to realize how important our immune system is. Oops. Okay, so I, what I want everyone to know is, first of all, how we can take uh, protect our health, health naturally. And for everybody that stays on this webinar all the way through, and I hope that I make it super fun and exciting so that you wanna stay on it, um, but if you stay till the end and then you actually call and there'll be a phone number and web address and everything for you to be able to get on afterwards and schedule a, 10 to 15 minute free consultation with me, we will be sending you a $10 Amazon gift card. And I really wanted to do that because we are in such a time of need and we need, there's essentials and, and necessities that we need. And I thought this would be a great way to be able to pass something off um, during this time of crisis that you could use to um, buy your essentials that you need. All right, so this is me and my husband, Chef Andrew. And for those of you that do not know us that are on this webinar, um, he is, he's made a great team with me, for me, in my business. So I've been in business for over 28 years. I have Balance Health Healing Centers. We have two locations in Texas, one location in Florida. And what a lot of people don't know is that we do have, I do have a virtual practice. I have worked with people virtually for a long time. My husband and I have put together some YouTubes called Nutritious Meets Delicious. Um, I'm nutritious, he's delicious. So he's the author of the cookbook, Nutritious Meets Delicious, Texas Farm to Table. I'm the author of The Seven Steps to a Healthy Body and a Renewed Spirit. I have my master's in science and nutrition. 
And like I said, I've been doing functional nutrition for a very long time, looking at the underlying cause for disease and helping people you know, get their life back and understand their health and get their immune system back. So I've been doing this for a while. So let's get into the coronavirus because I know lots of people are, are wanting to know some information about that. And we all know what we need to do right now as far as social distancing and washing hands, that's all important. But I wanted, a lot of us don't know the background of coronavirus. Coronavirus has actually been around since the 1960s. In fact, influenza, which we, we all know about that we get seasonally, usually winter time we start preparing for that, is a coronavirus. And what coronavirus is, is it actually corona means crown. And so these viruses have these crown-like spikes on the surface, which gave them the name of crown, hence coronavirus. Some of you may or may not have heard of Mo, uh, MERS, Cove, which was uh, the Middle Eastern um, Respiratory Syndrome, and then SARS, which was actually in China, which is the um, Acute Respiratory Syndrome, which is a coronavirus. So all these are coronaviruses. There's over 200 influenza common cold viruses that are coronaviruses that we're exposed to every year. So these viruses aren't new. It's just that COVID-19 has kind of hit at a fast rate. It's become a pandemic because it was, you know, it probably was bats that somehow was transported to human from human to human to human. So therefore it is a new coronavirus that is coming up at one time and at a very fast, rapid rate. And the other thing that's interesting about coronaviruses um, is that they are what is called an RNA virus which means that they have high mutation rates, which is why the influenza, when we get the flu, there's a new vaccine every year because it mutates and they can't uh, determine if the vaccine from the previous year is going to be beneficial. So you have to kind of keep up with the mutation of the virus. So we're, there's still a lot we don't know about the virus and I am by not any means claiming that I'm a vir virologist. Um, I'm just giving you some basic information that you might want to know. We could be, we're all probably going to be exposed to coronavirus just like the flu. And we may have a temporary immunity to it, but that immunity can fall off. So we can be exposed to this virus again. And so the vaccine that they're working on now that by the way, will not be available for the next year. We don't know. There are certain speculations that that vaccine may not be able to be beneficial in the future when this virus keeps um, mutating. So a lot of information is still out there that we don't know. And, and the other thing that I think is important to know is that just like influenza, you know, we can get the flu, but if our immune system is so suppressed, then we're going to have a secondary bacterial infection. We're going to end up with bronchitis or secondary bacterial uh, pneumonia. So that's very common. And so what we're seeing right now is a lot of the hospitals are getting secondary infections, which there is antibiotic resistance to. So a bacterial infection you use antibiotics for. And if it's resistant to the antibiotic, then we're seeing a lot more complications. Also with the pandemic, the whole thing is, is it's not that we're not going to be exposed to the coronavirus. Again, it means that we are trying to keep the medical, the, the hospitals and everything from being just inundated with too many people at one time and not enough ventilators and not enough masks. So we're, that's the whole thing about getting this virus to a point where we can not necessarily shut it down because we're not going to, but get it to a point where it's not going to overwhelm us. So that's the importance of social distancing. It is very important right now. Okay, let's talk about some pandemics. We've, we've been exposed to them. These are just a few that I've listed on here. Spanish flu, it infected one fifth of the world's population. Um, it killed millions of people and it's, there's different, um, you know, people may call me on this, 3,000 to 12,000 um, years of existence for smallpox, killing 300 to 5 million people. 
And then the flu pandemic and influenza, which is a coronavirus in 1889 to 1890, killed 1 million people. And then we had the flu pandemic again in 1918, which was 20 to 50 million people. So these viruses are here, they're going to continue to be here. And so we're getting to a point now where it is up to us to take responsibility of our health the best we can. And it does not mean we're not going to get the virus. It does not mean it's not the necessity of what, how severe it's gonna be from one person to another. We don't know that. Just like right now, they're talking about healthy people getting this virus. Well, how do we know what the health of that person is? We're gonna be talking today about the commensal bacteria, which is your robust immune system. We're gonna be talking about nutrition. We don't really know when they're saying a healthy person, they just mean that that person is not presenting with another disease state. So they can't actually do a, you know, a, a lab or science project to see what the health of that person was. Um, I wanted to throw this in there. Some of you may or may not have heard of Florence Nightingale. She was um, in the 1800s and the early 1900s, she was a nurse and she actually is the one that came up with the foundational principles back in the war, the Crimean War. And I'm not like this history buff, but it was the Crimean War. And so what she found is that a lot of these soldiers were not actually dying from their wounds. They were dying from infectious diseases because, the, um, because their hygiene was so poor. Um, when she went to the hospital, she found that people were just you know, there were rats everywhere and there was no hygiene. And so she came up with this whole thing that good hygiene is, of course, washing your hands, making sure that you're in a clean environment, fresh air, which we're going to talk about today, exercise and good food. What does good food mean? It means healthy, nutritional food that feeds our cells that is not going to be toxic to our bodies. So um, this was back in the 1800s. It's nothing new. Nothing new at all. So, so we have to take control right now. We have to. We have to take a stand for our health. No one else will if we don't. And disease care is not going to help us anymore. We can no longer sit here and say, you know what, I don't care that I have diabetes. I'm just going to take insulin so I can go eat cheeseburgers. Well, you can do that. But then when you do get these viruses and certain things that shut down our immune system because the immune system didn't have a stand to, to begin with, then that's going to be on us. So what I want to give you today is some keys to take back your health, to take control over your health. Prevention is the key right now. It really is. And again, this vaccine's not going to be around for another year, and who knows if it's going to be able to be used in a year. I don't know that. The medications being used right now, they don't really know. Um, they're, they're kind of throwing things out there and just trying to, to see what works because everybody's kind of in this whole state of panic. Nobody really knows, but these medications have a lot of side effects. I'm not saying if you get sick, don't go to the hospital and don't take the medication. I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is if you take a stand right now and work on your health and your immune system, chances are when we do get this coronavirus, it may not present itself to be severe. So what do we do? Steps to boost your immune system. So I wanna talk about my little Kona baby. This is my little chocolate lab. I got Kona when he was six weeks old. He was pulled from his mom too soon, so he didn't get the benefits of the um, natural antibiotics, so to speak. His commensal bacteria, just like us, wasn't formed right. Um, so he had a weakened immune system. He got pulled from his mom too soon. And then the stressor of coming to me, which now I know he loves me, but at the time he was a scared little pup and he wanted his mom. And so he had a weakened immune system and he got very sick, very sick. Um, the, the breeder wanted to take him back and put him down because he was gonna die. And I will tell you that the medications were not working, the antibiotics were not working, nothing was working for him. And what worked for him was nutrition. I pretty much nursed him back with pure nutrition, herbal supplements. I did everything I could to get him nutritionally sound and get his probiotic status, his commensal bacteria, his robust immune system on board so he could fight this. And this is my little baby boy now. Of course, he's a lot older, but 
um, total nutrition pup right here. So this just goes to show you that nutrition does matter. So let's talk about let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy fo food. This is why doctors take an oath today. This was Hippocrates, the father of medicine. And so once again, just shows you how food can be our friend, but it can also be very toxic to us. So it's important to focus on our food. Balanced eating. So lifestyle modifications, you know, yes, there's things I can help you with. I want to help you with that, but just staying away from the sugar, the processed food, genetically modified foods. You know, if you can't read the ingredients and you don't know what it is and it's in a box or a can, it's, it's not going to be giving you the nutrition and the nutrients that you need. I always like to explain this a little, um, something you may not know is that we are energy, our bodies. And so our cells actually in our body resonate at a frequency. And when we are taking in foods and supplements that are not good for us, they do not, those foods do not resonate because they're not living, they're not a living source. And so therefore they're not going to resonate as the same as, the same as our cell. And so it becomes toxic. So living food, which is you know healthy greens, lean meats, good fats, nuts and seeds, coconut oil, you know, butter, real butter, not margarine, all of those things are important for us that can go a long way with our nutrition status. Nitrate rich foods. So I'm gonna talk about nitric oxide um, further down in the presentation, but nitrate rich foods, meaning that these foods give us oxygen. And when our body is oxygenated, pathogens and viruses cannot um, they, they don't resonate with that. They are um, more anaerobic. So we, when we give our bodies oxygen and circulation and good living food, it's going to take us a long way. And so these are a list of some of those foods. Again, we help you put that together more in detail because this can become overwhelming. But if you just start eating blueberries and beets, oh my gosh, think of a beet. It's red, right? That's our blood. That's our oxygen. So eating these foods will, will kind of help boost your immune system. Um, warm, healthy drinks. I put this in here because, you know, the whole talk with COVID-19 and influenza really is, bottom line is when and if you get sick, you should drink warm drinks that will actually flush the pathogens out of the throat and keep them from maybe trying to get into the respiratory system. I love rose hips tea. It's got a lot of vitamin C, a lot of nutrients. You can do warm lemon water, herbal teas, bone broth, hibiscus tea is really good. Um, so, but also the other thing is, is that when we raise our body temperature, our core temperature with warm drinks, that's why infrared saunas are so good because we're raising our core temperature, then we are going to, pathogens cannot survive in that. So keeping our core temperature warm and elevated is a good thing and these warm drinks help with that. So sleep, sleep is the golden chain that ties health and our bodies together and that is so true and I know we are kind of a lot of us are stressed out right now and it's hard to sleep but let me start by saying you know all this technology if you think about um, the days when we didn't have technology and everybody got up when the when it was light outside and we simply went to sleep when it was dark because we couldn't see anything um, we had what is called a natural circadian rhythm and that circadian rhythm gets disrupted by our electronics and lights and just all of our gaming and, and things that we have going on. Our body also repairs itself between the hours of 11 and two, meaning that um, detoxification, immune system, there's all kinds of things going on. And so when we're staying up till 12 and one o'clock and then we're not sleeping very well, we're missing that good repair time. And there's studies that show that we are gonna be at a higher risk for diabetes, hypertension, all kinds of disease states when we are not getting proper sleep. And we also make fewer cytokines. Cytokines are the proteins that target infection and inflammation. And so these cytokines are very important for us to have on board. And so when we're making fewer of them, then we're going to be more exposed to infections. By increasing oxygen, you can bring your body's metabolic process into balance. I wonder what I'm talking about here. Lovely exercise. <laughs> 
So exercise is not just about this look and feel. It's about, you know, flushing pathogens out of the lungs and airways. Our respiration is a way of detoxing. It reduces cravings for addictive foods. It lowers our stress hormones. So when we exercise, we feel calmer. It increases the circulation of antibodies, which again is very important for our immune system. Helps us achieve sleep, increases our body temperature. There we go again with that core body temperature and prevents heart disease and diabetes. Okay, so guys, this doesn't count, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so I have tried, been trying to uh, ride my bike at least and take my dogs on the side with me, but yeah, the car doesn't count. <laughs> the dog's getting great uh, fitness though, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, so even though COVID-19 is caused by this new virus, um, a healthy person with a robust immune system will recover similar to influenza, okay? I didn't say that. This is by professor, she's an immunologist. So, so this is a true fact. All right, let's get into some supplements that can help you. We talked about food, let's talk about some supplements that are important for your immune system. We're gonna talk about probiotics, we're gonna talk about vitamin C, nitric oxide, neuroimmune control, vitamin D, and adrenal support, kind of the things we've covered and why they're important. All right, so 70% of your immune system is in the gut. We have more organisms in our colon than there are stars in the galaxy, okay? So if you went out in the hill country, turned off the light, looked up at the sky, that's what's going on in our colon. That gets knocked off by diet, food, processed foods, medications, antibiotics, um, stress, all of those things are going to affect our immune system. So it's important to make sure that we are taking a good probiotic and that we are um, you know, making sure that it, there's a million different probiotics out on the market. Let me just say, everybody has a probiotic for something, but is it right for you? Is it human strain? Is it really going in and helping beef up that commensal bacteria? And that's all important stuff that we can help you identify. Vitamin C. I know um, vitamin C everyone's taking right now, but here's some facts. Most of the vitamin C out there is full of sugar and corn. First of all, corn is a genetically modified food, and it's also ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid is not the proper form of vitamin C. It, it needs to be L-ascorbate, which is the only one I use. That is going to help fight free radical damage, yes, but here's the key. If you're taking 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C and you feel like you're coming down with something, your health crisis of your body has gone up, which means you're utilizing glutathione, which is our power antioxidant, our king antioxidant is being expended. We, uh, we're getting lots of free radical damage. So 1,000 to 2,000 is not going to be enough. You have to do a C calibration and it has to be done with a good quality C. So what I recommend for my clients is I have them take a certain amount of L-ascorbate powder every 15 minutes and so we can get those saturation of the cells to get those cells where they need to be so they can fight that infection. If you do it the right way, it's a natural antibiotic. You can break a fever, you can do all kinds of things with vitamin C. It's very powerful if it's the right form, if it's pure and it's not junk, and that it's being utilized the right way. Vitamin D is our sunshine vitamin. You know, we all just need to be taking some breaks, going outside. 15 minutes um, for most of us for vitamin D to actually the sun to be able to take the cholesterol in our skin, the receptors, and turn that into vitamin D. Now the studies show that if you're someone who has blue eyes and you're fair skin, you're probably going to get vitamin D from being in the sun for 15 minutes. But if you're someone who is darker complected, you have dark eyes, you're probably going to need a little bit more of that healthy sunshine. I know we're all concerned about skin cancer, but you can go outside for increments. You can take little breaks, especially right now when we're all home, go out on the patio, enjoy your herbal tea, maybe take a little walk, go on a bike ride. Um, most of us, when we get our vitamin levels checked by our doctor, our levels will be 30 and below, and the healthy level should be 75 to 85. And people that have diabetes or already have 
some kind of disease or breast cancer, different things like that, their vitamin D levels will be really low. So we need to make sure that we're keeping an eye on that, getting the sunshine, but also taking supplementation if you need to. And that's okay. A good quality vitamin D and dosing it appropriately is very important. It's going to take you a long way. Neuroimmune control is a product that we use very successfully for lots of different um, viruses, all pathogens, fungal infections. It has a, a great combination, um, grape seed, which is for its antioxidant properties. You can see on here, L-lysine is um, keeps viruses from activating. Some of you have heard of monolaurin, which is actually in coconut oil. It's the lauric acid uh, part of the coconut oil, but it's bare, it has lots of properties for antimicrobial and antiviral properties. B propolis, so it's a really good foundational um, supplement right now, where it can kind of um, uh, encompass a lot of different things. So right now we have almost all of our clients on this product. It, it works really well. All right, nitri nitric oxide. Not a lot of people know about this. So nitric oxide is pretty much the cell communication with all of our cells. And it's very important for circulation, oxygen, vasodilator, um, lowering blood blood pressure, I'm sorry, but also inhibits pathogens. The importance of nitric oxide is that if we are not oxygenating our blood and we are not getting good circulation, we are not going to be able to cleanse the blood and get the nutrients where it needs to go to our different organs and to our muscle tissue and all kinds of stuff. So nitric oxide is very important. We do a test in my office. It's a little litmus you put on your tongue and it shows us a color of where your nitric oxide levels are. Most people that I test are barely showing up in the pink. They're showing um, clear or no color. And that means that they're not getting enough nitric oxide, which means when you get a pathogen or something, it's not going to be able to, it's in an anaerobic state. And so that's going to thrive in an anaerobic state. So we need to make sure our nitric oxide levels are where they should be and we're getting lots of good oxygen and circulation. This is actually a study, I thought this was cool. This was in the Journal of Virology, showing that it is an important signaling molecule between cells. And in this study, they actually showed that it um, helped with um, different viruses and stuff from, from replicating. So I thought that was nice to have on here. So stress, well, yes, we're in a stressful time. Um, when we are in a stressful time, it's called a fight or, flight, fight or flight response. And so when we're in a fight or flight response, we're going to have this quick burst of energy. It's going to help us get what we need at that particular moment. Kind of like if you were at the park, it's a beautiful sunshiny day and a bear pops out. Well, your heart rate and everything is going to go up so you can get the heck out of Dodge. But then when that bear goes away, everything calms back down but we're constantly in this stress response like we are now, you're going to get the necessary things you need to keep you in that stressful time. So your heart rate and breathing and everything will be utilized appropriately, but it's gonna shut down the unnecessary systems, which are immune system and reproductive system. That's why women, when they're trying to get pregnant and they're stressed out about it, sometimes they can't get pregnant. Well, right now we need our stress hormones to be where they should be and keep calm because it's affecting our immune system by being in that constant fight or flight. So how we do that is there is a product that we use. It's called adrenal support. It's going to help with sleep. It's going to help with the weakened adrenal function. Um, it's going to just help overall, but there's some behavioral modifications you can do as well. You can do meditation. You can go out in the sunshine. You can take a time out a breather you can get on zoom with some family members and laugh and dance and there's all kinds of things alpha state whenever you get your body in an alpha state which is that more meditation yoga all of those things can help behaviorally bring down that that um, stress hormone So I really like this, tell me and I may remember, show me and I will remember, involve me and I will understand. So that's what I'm trying to do today is help you to understand. 
just what's going on and, and the measures that you can take to improve your health. And gratitude. Gratitude helps you to grow, expand. It brings joy and laughter into your life and into the, the, those around you. And that is so true. And I talk a lot about attitude of gratitude in my book um, on a daily basis in my talks, but I think more than ever, how we can use this right now is just finding a place where we can be grateful for something, whether it's connecting with our kids or sitting down and having dinner together or um, kind of, you know, maybe a time out. Like we, we're, I, sometimes we say, you know, I just wish the world would stop for a minute so I could catch up. Well, guess what? The world is stopping for a minute. And so we can catch up, maybe get some rest, maybe kind of take a step back and, and learn some new things and just be grateful for our health or whatever the case may be. You know, I'd say, I know we need to know what's going on in the media. Yes, it's important to know where we are, but sometimes too much of it 24 seven is going to just throw us into the stratosphere. I know it does me. It's just maybe disengage a little bit, take a step back so that we can um, kind of focus on just our loved ones and, and ourselves. Try to find the positives in where you are. Take walks on your patio, get on a bike, breathe. I've seen on Facebook, people are actually pulling their bikes out of the garage that have cobwebs on them. So everyone's kind of getting out as a family. So it's kind of cool. And last, wake up and stop procrastinating. This is the time now. It's up to you. You can do this. We can do this. I'm here to help you do this. You know, there's lots of things we can do to work on our own health. So again, for you guys, maybe that got on a little later, I'm going to, if you schedule a 10 to 15 minute free consultation with me, so I can help you identify some things that are going on in your life and your health that I can help you with. I want to do that. Um, so if you do that, you book that call with me. We are going to give you a $10 Amazon gift card. Um, we're gonna be doing that because I wanna make sure that you have some essentials just drop shipped to your house. And I thought what better way than, than to do the $10 Amazon card. So the next steps would be to, to call, call my office, get on my schedule. You know, Take some of these slides I've shared with you and utilize them and start putting them into practice. And I hope that everybody feels empowered now with some tools that they didn't have before. Uh, appreciate your time and just stay in peace. Stay in peace. Love you guys. Bye-bye.